Hello everyone. In this presentation, I will be discussing hedging strategies using futures. I will discuss this topic in three parts. In the part one, I will be discussing the introduction of hedging, the benefits of hedging, and I will explain it with the help of various case studies to give more practical approach to your learning process. In part two, I will be discussing the basis risk. And in part three, I will be discussing cross hedging. So let's find it out. Before starting my presentation, I request all of you to please subscribe my channel and share it with your friends. When we study hedging strategies using future, the first question which comes in our mind is, is hedging profitable? To understand and to answer this question, we must be very clear what is hedging? Who are the hedgers in the derivative market and why do they hedge? What is perfect hedge? And we will see the types of hedging. There are two types of hedging that is short hedge and long hedge. Then finally, I am going to discuss various case studies which will make you clear on the arguments for and against hedging and then the conclusion. Let us find out the answer of the first question. What is hedging and how hedging is used as risk management strategy? Hedging is a fundamental way to safeguard investment from unpredictable market fluctuations. We all know that markets are not unidirectional. Sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down. Sometimes bulls are stronger, sometimes bears are stronger. Bull pushes the market up, bear pulls the market down. So markets are not unidirectional. Therefore, hedging plays a very important role in risk management strategy for the investors to counterbalance potential losses in investment. The objective behind hedging is to reduce the risk of adverse price movement of an asset by taking offsetting or opposite position in related securities. Hedging can be done in different market segments. Hedging can be done in gold, silver, copper and other commodities. In stock market, hedging can be done in various stocks and indices. Hedging can be also done in foreign exchange market. Therefore, hedging is somewhat analogous to taking out an insurance policy. Hedging is an investment that protects the individual's finance from being exposed to a risky situation that may lead to a loss of value. At the same time, we should not forget that hedging does not necessarily mean that the investment won't lose value at all. Perhaps the loss will be mitigated by the gains in another investment. A common form of hedging is derivative whose value is measured by value of underlying assets. Types of hedging On the basis of price action, hedging are classified into two types, the short hedge and the long hedge. We all know that when the markets are moving up and there is a bullish sentiment in the market, in the bull run, hedges go for a long hedge. They take a long position in the future contract. But when there is expectation of fall in the market, the bearish move in the market, hedges take the short position or they go for short hedge. Short hedge. It involves 
short position in future quadrant. It is done by two ways. Number one, the hedger already own the asset at a lower price and expect to sell it sometimes in future when the price goes up. Or the second is short hedge can also be used when the asset is not owned right now but will be owned at some time in future. It is shorting or short selling. That is, you borrow the asset, you sell at a high price, and when the price goes down, you buy the asset and return asset back and book the profit. Whereas, long hedge includes taking a long position in the future contract. It is appropriate if an investor or a company knows that it will have to purchase a certain asset in future and wants to lock in price now. The next question comes in is what type of traders do hedging? How hedges are different from speculators and arbitrages? Hedges are the risk averse traders. They trade to protect against the price fluctuations. They try to understand the market. What would be the market situation at the time when their contract expires? Will the market goes up or it would come down? What would be the move of the market? Will the market move in his favor or against his trade? Therefore, hedgers buy and sell in derivatives market, which includes futures and options, in order to reduce the risk of their portfolio that might relate to fluctuations in the price. When an individual or a company chooses to use future market to hedge the risk, their objective is usually to take a position that neutralizes the risk as far as possible. In that way, they protect themselves from the risk and uncertainty involved in the price movements. Let us try to find out how hedges are different from other kinds of traders like speculators and arbitrages. Hedges are basically risk averse traders. They use derivative to reduce the risk that they face from the future movement in the market variables. Whereas speculators are risk lovers. They are extremely high risk seeker who anticipate future price movement in hope of making large and quick gains. So speculators also use derivatives to bet on future direction of the market variables. Whereas arbitrages are the low risk traders who involves in buying securities in one market and simultaneously selling the securities in another market. This happens when the same securities are traded at different prices in two different markets. Now let us see some important questions which comes in the exam related to hedging. Number one is what is perfect hedge? Number two is is perfect hedge a myth or a reality? What are the basic principles of hedging? So let's find out the answer. Now the question is what is perfect hedge? So the answer is perfect hedge is the one that completely eliminates the risk. It is the position which eliminates every market risk from the portfolio. A perfect hedge refers to a position which an investor undertakes to eliminate the risk of an existing position. That means we can say that in perfect hedge, hedger simply takes a future position at the beginning of the life of the hedge and closes out the position at the end of the life of a hedge. The important question that comes here is, is perfect hedge a myth or a reality? The answer is perfect hedge is very rare. 
it is very difficult to achieve perfect hedge why because of three reasons reason number 1 is associated with the asset problem where the underlying security of the future contract and the asset that is needed to be hedged are not the same this is the case of cross hedging where the asset underlying the future contract is not the same as asset whose price is being hedged cross hedging occur when two assets are different take an example of airline industry an airline industry is concerned about future price of jet fuel because jet fuel futures are not actively traded it might choose to use heating oil futures contract to trade or to hedge its exposure problem number 2 problem number 2 is associated with the time the time to delivery of the asset does not match the time of closing the future contract problem number 3 is the hedges do not know the exact time to trade in the market so because of these three reasons it is very difficult to construct a perfect hedge now what is the solution the solution is we should try to construct the hedge that is as close to perfect hedge as possible so if perfect hedge is difficult or impossible to construct we should always try to construct the hedge which is very close to perfect hedge so we have seen the various challenges of hedging in practice hedging is often not simple and straightforward it is associated with various problems related with assets date of maturity problem with the closing out position of the contract etc all these problems together will give rise to a basis risk which we will study in the next part as an investor and a risk lover you always want to get higher reward for taking risk so there is no reason to completely remove all the risk out of an investment because if you are neutralizing the risk it would have similar impact on reward higher risk higher reward and lower risk lower reward so instead of targeting a perfect hedge investors and traders should look to establish a range of probabilities where the worst and the best outcomes are both acceptable therefore traders do this by establishing a trading bands for the underlying they are trading the band can be fixed or can move up and down with the underlying these are the five case studies which i will be discussing in the coming slides to explain you the hedging with examples if you have any question on this presentation please put your question in the comment section and like and subscribe my channel to get further notification thank you so much